welcome people in this video let us look at the pathogenesis of uh, helicobacter pylori how helicobacter pylori is able to create all the problems in us i will give you five points only so don't worry much quickly just look at this the first thing is vac a cytotoxin vac a cytotoxin in this this vac is vacuoles in cytoplasm there is a toxin that induces the formation of vacuoles in the cytoplasm of epithelial cells. Okay, so this is the cytotoxin for you to remember. There is a cytotoxin, and uh, if this is a cell, okay, it is the host cell that too. In the host cell, and this is the host cell nucleus. What this um, uh, Helicobacter pylori uh, cytoplasm will do, it will come and induce vacuoles, create vacuoles in the cytoplasm. So, this is going to be a bad thing of course, right. So, this is how the Helicobacter pylori cytotoxin that is VAC A type cytotoxin works. One point over. Here is the second point for you, pathogenicity island in the genetic material of the bacteria. Here you have the pathogenicity island which is going to carry a gene that is called as CAG A gene. Gene is what? CAG A gene. This gene will encode for this gene will encode for a type 4 secretion system. It will encode for what? Type 4 secretion system. This is going to make syringe like structure. And it is that syringe like structure is going to prick the host cell and the bacteria will be able to modulate certain aspects of the host cell. This diagram definitely should remind you of the pathogenesis of H. pylori. What in all is it able to modify? It is able to modify the H. pylori bacteria is able to modify the cytoskeleton of the uh, host cell. It is able to modify the morphology of the host cell. It is going to help in expression of proto-oncogenes, okay. Then it is also going to be pro-inflammatory, uh, it will help in release of pro-inflammatory cytokines. So, these are the four points that you can remember how this H. pylori will damage the host cell, okay. This is point two, point two is over. Coming to the third point, molecular mimicry. See, the antigen of H. pylori is identical to the Lewis blood group antigen. So, if this is the antigen of H. pylori, it is so identical to the Lewis blood group antigen. Hence, what happens? There will be immune tolerance and autoantibodies can be generated again and causing chronic active gastritis. So, chronic, chronic active gastritis could be because of the autoantibodies, okay, because the antigen is so similar to the Lewis blood group antigen. So, this is molecular mimicry. Third point over. Fourth point coming up here, uh, three points I have already covered, totally five I told you. What were the three points? One was, uh, come on, come on, recollect. The first was what? The vacuoles, vac A, vacuoles in cytoplasm. Second was what? CAG A, CAG A means the uh, cytotoxin, what was it? Cytotoxin associated gene A. Wow, yeah, this was giving all these syringe like structures. Point 3 was molecular mimicry which we have completed. Now we are moving on to point 4. Alteration in gastric mucosa. The gastric mucosa is altered in such a way that the gastric mucosa is unable to protect the stomach lining. Why? How does this happen? Because this H. pylori will make sure that this glycosylation and sulfilation cannot happen of the gastric mucosa. The glycosylation and sulfilation cannot, sulfation cannot happen. Hence, gastric mucosa is unable to protect our stomach. Point 4 over. Coming to last one here. Point 5. Point 5 is something like host factors. Host factors means some of them may have some polymorphism in cytokine gene uh, or genes that are called coding toll receptor, toll like receptors. Hence, there can be gastric adenocarcinoma because of polymorphism in the cytokine genes or the genes which are coding toll receptors then this, this can lead to gastric adenocarcinoma and few people H. pylori can lead to gastric adenocarcinoma. So understand some people may have a polymorphism in cytokine genes or the genes coding toll like receptors. This is a host criteria. This host criteria of these altered genes or polymorphism in the genes 
may lead to gastric adenocarcinoma. H. pylori takes advantage of that and lands up and gives you a gastric adenocarcinoma. Some other host factors which can uh, help uh, H. pylori create problem for us. Smoking, okay, we put a diagram of smoking here for you so that you will not forget. Smoking, high diet in salt, uh, preserve, uh, sorry, diet which is high in salt, preserve food, etc. can lead to uh, pathogenesis of H. pylori being more aggressive. What will protect you against H. pylori? Antioxidants, vitamin C, these can pr protect you against H. pylori. Antioxidants, vitamin C, how will you get? Eating fresh foods, fresh fruits, vegetables, etc. Okay. Let's revise this video, what and all we saw here. Our intention was to look at the pathological changes induced by H. pylori uh, bacteria. The first one you should know is VAC A. It creates vacuoles in cytoplasm. You can see here VAC A. This is the cytotoxin. Correct. Then moving on. The second point will, will, have, will be CAG A. How CAG A is a cytotoxin associated gene A which is a pathogenicity island and it will uh, encode the type 4 secretion system which will give syringe like structures that will be translocated onto the host cell surface and the bacteria will be able to modulate certain aspects of the host cell like the cytoskeleton, the morphology, the expression of proto-oncogenes and also pro-inflammatory cytokines. Moving on to the third point, molecular mimicry. The antigen of H. pylori is identical to Lewis blood group antigen. Hence, there could be immune tolerance and autoantibodies which could lead to chronic active gastritis. Fine. Fourth point here, alteration in gastric mucosa because gastric mucosa is not able to gly get glycosylated and sulfated. Hence, gastric mucosa is unable to protect. Last point here. The last point here is that the host factors which can lead to uh, some things like gastric adenocarcinoma can, gastric adenocarcinoma can happen if uh, some people have polymorphism in the cytokine genes like the IL-1 uh, gene of the IL-1 or there could be alteration in genes that are coding toll-like receptors, right? So that, that could lead to gastric adenocarcinoma. Some other things in the host that can lead to pathogenesis of H. pylori will be Smoking, diet which is high in salt, preserved food, etc. That's why you should always eat fresh food which are rich in antioxidants and vitamin C. Very good. Always revise, always revise, right? Tell me what and all you learn. H. pylori. H. Helicobacter pylori pathogenesis by VAC A. CAG A gene, then molecular mimicry, then alteration of gastric mucosa, last is host factors. This was learnt in this video. Bye-bye.